Hey everybody, Terry here, D-Lab. And I happened to get lucky, I went to an auction and I bought this old Valiant for 50 bucks. Hopefully it's savable. The lady told me that the user manual is inside. So let's open it up. Right. So I've already taken out the screws. So it should come out. You can see it's in good shape. It looks like a factory unit. This is kind of funny. She said it was a manual, but it's it's just an old newspaper. Huh. What? <laughs> Isn't this what you always want to happen when you open up a boat anchor to find a treasure? But no. Normally you find dust and mouse poop. In this case, I found the cash, but guess what? It's fake! <laughs> well, back to reality. The Valiant actually came to D-Lab in need of repair. The owner states that the high voltage on it is not operating properly. It won't dip. Sometimes it pegs out. So there's obviously some issues in the power supply. So let's get her apart, take a look, see what we find. Well, here she is topside. And as you can see, you got the little pop rivets in here, indicating that this is a factory built unit. I noticed that this transformer here is missing some hardware, and this guy's loose. So I bet you that's been changed. Here's your modulators. There is the VFO. Hopefully without that Chernobyl resistor in it. Okay. Pair of 3B28 rectifier tubes instead of the 866s. So all in all, she's a little dusty and dirty, but it looks complete. Let's take a look at the bottom. So here we are, bottom side of the Valiant. So I always give these things a thorough inspection before doing any work or powering her up. In this case, you can see you got some new filter caps over here. And these filter caps are rated at 220 microfarad, 450 volt. The original Valiant had 80s in there. So I'm concerned about those putting too much load on the rectifier tubes. So we'll have to check that out. The other thing I noticed is this choke was only held in by one screw. So I decided to lift him out of the way and see why. And here's what I discovered. Somebody has changed one of the power transformers. And when they did it, they didn't do such a great job. Okay, so if you take a look down here at these solder connections, they're pretty cold and there's little remnants of the old transformer wiring. So they just clipped them out. I guess if you're in a hurry, that's okay. Here is the bias rectifier, same thing. You see the wiring there hanging out. Okay, there's one down there too. And the most alarming part is the one over here to the bias adjustment pots. Go right down here and grab this wire and look at him. He pulls in and out of the pot. So that has to be corrected. Also need to go in here and clean things up. I don't like the looks of these connections. I don't like the looks of this grounding here on these two caps. Okay. So we're going to clean it up. I'm going to remount this transformer. I'm going to check the rectifier tubes. Possibly put in some new capacitors that are in the range they should be. And then we'll see if this thing transmits. So here are the rectifier tubes out of the Valiant. Okay, now normally the Valiant comes with 866s, the Mercury Vapor Monsters, but normally everybody changes them out to these 3B28s. But if you look here, I've got one 3B28, and this one's a 3B25. So that's kind of odd. And then if you listen, hear it? They're like baby rattles. So I'm going to check these tubes before I apply voltage to them, obviously. So that'd be the next thing on the list. As I was in here cleaning up the connections on these bias pots, I look down here in the harness, you can see a big glob of solder that's melted right into the insulation of this white wire. And there's a purple one underneath of it. It's kind of hard to get in here. But anyway. There's solder globs in here, which could potentially short these wires out. So, another thing to clean up. 
So the solder globs are gone, and luckily, no, it did not melt into the insulation. It just appeared that way. So that was a good deal. The other thing I'm doing is I'm going to replace this 15K resistor that's going to the bias pots. The old one that was in here, as you can see, was kind of uh, cobbled in. It's got some nice electrical tape here, a little wire going down. So I thought, well, what the heck, let's put in a nice fresh one. So to clean up the capacitor issue, I mounted a terminal board here to mount those two negative bias caps on, ran wires over to the socket. The other issue I see is since this transformer was replaced, if you look down here, these wires are stripped back pretty far. It's kind of hard to see, I know, but they are very tight. The transformer windings are, which is putting stress down here where they come out of the chassis. So I'm going to extend these, get them up off the chassis, have some slack so things don't short out. Well that wraps up the bias rectifier area. See we've got plenty of slack now on those wires. Nothing in there that can short out. Caps are cleaned up. Now let's move over to this guy. You can see i got a lot of work to do here. A lot of cold connections. This grounding over here. Get that cleaned up and then I'm going to reinstall the choke. So I'm going to start off by getting rid of this crazy ground lug they got going. Okay. So lift that off. So I'm probably going to put a terminal board down here, remount those caps, and have some wire runners going over to that tube, just like we did over here in the negative bias section. Alright, we're all wrapped up. Here's the wiring on that socket complete. Cleaned her all up, had to extend one lead here because it was way too short. And here's new filter caps connected, got their own little terminal board, and they've been glued into position so then I can move around. Also glued these down. Alright, so I'm happy with this area of the chassis, but I'm not happy with this area, mainly those filter caps. So I'm going to change them out with these guys here. I'm going to install some terminal boards, clean that up. We'll check the rectifier tubes, and then we'll do a power-up. So there's the old caps. And there's our new installed caps with terminal boards. Nice and neat. I'm going to put in a new set of 3B28s. We're going to fire this thing up. So I thought before I fire it up, I better make sure Mr. Chernobyl is not at home. Well, he's not, but there's two resistors down here taking his place. There's a big glob solder there. So I'm going to take that out and replace it with one nice 5 watt ceramic type. So the nice thing about working on the Valiance VFO versus the Ranger is you do have access. You have to use some long nose pliers and tweezers but you can fish those parts in there to reinstall them without having to pull the whole face off. All right, the new resistor is installed, and I've got a test probe on it, going right to the OA2. So let's turn it on. Watch your meter, which is coming up. OA2 should start glowing here. There it goes. 148 volts. So I'd say she's alive and well. So the true test is, is that oscillator running? Go to zero. You can see it is running. There's my grid. Should be adjust my drive. Excellent. Next step, we're going to put this thing in transmit mode. All right, it's test time for the Valiant. I've got it in CW mode on 40 meters, and we'll flip the old switch. Bam! Putting out about 120 watts. Got a good plate dip. Let's go to AM mode and see if she modulates. Okay, now we're in AM. So what I'm going to do is we'll go to grid first. And now I have a microphone hooked up. Key him up. There's my grid. There's my plate. There's a modulator current. And there's some modulation. She's talking. The voltage regulators inside are flashing away. 
So she appears to be working. You can hear my voice coming out of those modulators. All right, mission accomplished on the Valiant Repair. And as you can see, most of the repair efforts were to go back and clean up work that was not done properly. So if you're gonna work on these things, take the time, do it right, keep it neat, so that the next guy that comes in won't have to work so hard. But because it was so hard to do, I had to charge a substantial amount of money. By the way, this is fake money. D-Lab could only wish to have a wad like that. Hope you enjoyed the video. We'll see you again.